Historically, fire burned pretty frequently through the mixed conifer forests of the Sierra Nevadas, resulting in large areas of low severity and some interspersed pockets of moderate and high severity. That was drastically different than the King Fire, which burned with just under half of the fire area at a high severity that killed most of the trees and in large pockets, all of the trees. So the historical records say that fire came through approximately every seven to 15 years on average. And so it would maintain a lot more open space with a mosaic of different fuel conditions out there. And so you'd have some pockets of higher fuel loading, but you'd also have large areas with low fuel loading and discontinuous fuels. Our fire frequencies currently, because of effective fire suppression, has extended our fire return intervals to more than 100 years in several areas. And so the fires that we're getting nowadays are burning a lot different. We've got a lot more continuous fuels on the ground and in the canopies, we've got a lot less of the mosaic of fuels. And so when a fire gets into that environment, the fire can keep burning. There's no self-regulating mechanism in that forest structure that is created in the absence of fire to stop a fire from moving into tree crowns and continuing to move across a considerably large area. Also, when you look at how fires historically burned, those high severity pockets would have generally been less than 10 acres, and most of them would have been below an acre in size. And when you look at the King Fire, the largest high severity patch was greater than 30,000 acres. And so just the scale of the impacts we're seeing now are drastically different than anything that would have occurred in previous fires. So had this area been in a historic condition, it would have been a lot more resilient to fire, even given the drought conditions that were a factor in the King Fire. The King Fire you know, still could have definitely burned through, but it would have maintained a lot more of the trees intact and the forest areas intact, and you definitely would have had much smaller pockets of high severity. Ignited by lightning or set by Native Americans, fires regularly burned across Sierra Nevada forests for thousands of years. For the last century, land managers have suppressed fire to protect homes, protect timber, protect our water and power and recreational infrastructure that we've built in the Sierra Nevada. That's led to overcrowded forests filled with small trees. At the same time, climate change is leading to drier fuel conditions. The results are events like the King Fire, fires that are burning larger and hotter than ever before, threatening human lives, threatening biodiversity, threatening our infrastructure, and our water supplies. We know that humans are responsible for the state of our forests, so it's up to us to create more resilient forests as our climate warms. The Sierra Nevada Watershed Improvement Program aims to do just that by supporting projects and partners that are thinning overcrowded forests and returning healthy fire, we hope to make the Sierra Nevada region more resilient into the future.